So hi and welcome back and I'm just out for a walk. I'm avoiding doing things because uh, I'm going to move obviously very soon and um, I've got to either pack my cameras or get rid of them and oh, I mean my film cameras I don't mean my digital cameras and it's one of those things that I'm at the point now of like should I only keep one film camera and get rid of the rest and there is a good reason for this the reason being is let's get around and get some sun in my face there is a good reason for this and that's because I'm uh, thinking some of these cameras literally just sit on the shelf for a year at a time and never get used and then once I'll every so often I'll dust them off and I'll take them out and take some shots and then you find that they're not working like they used to work so I'm at the point now where I'm thinking to myself do I just stick with one or two cameras and get rid of the rest should I give them away should I just like uh, like I'm done with this and give the rest away and just keep two uh, either uh, I think I'm, if I do it'll be the ones I like the most rather than the ones that have that nostalgic memory like the Practica I, I wouldn't keep that um, not because they're two a penny and if I wanted to get another one I could so I'm literally thinking to myself it's, is it time I say just to, just to get rid of them or give them away um, and uh, would anyone want uh, the cameras I can't be doing with the whole eBay m messing around going at the post office and stuff like that so I'm gonna go home now and I'm gonna go through the different cameras and uh, just talk you through them quickly and if anyone's interested in them let me know okay as I said earlier in the video that I'm getting rid of all my camera or my film cameras or almost all of them I'm gonna keep props one or two and uh, the ones you're gonna see are the ones I really I really don't care for anymore and um, I've got three Canons now this was the one the EOS 100 was the one I used to oh, I really want to get this camera so it was it was great it was brilliant I ended up with the thousand FM which I'll show you in a minute or is it a thousand F that I've got I'd have to check anyway this one was the one my friend had and I believe I was just looking at it I'm not really looking at the manual I believe at the side here I think there used to be like a barcode thing you could scan. I think that's what you used to be able to do. And, and then you'd then put that up against this piece here and it would then, um, it would then give it data to the actual ca uh, camera itself. And um, very, very, very book standard Canon stuff here. Like with all of these ones, they, they didn't do much more in the sense of uh, the different functionality. It was just there were some more functions in others than one than another and also uh, you know um, frames per second and stuff like that and uh, you know the old poppy uppy flash as they say as well and uh, a few more controls but um, I bought this one second hand oh well before the trouble times I put a roll of film through it and a test roll of film and it didn't come out, but I've checked the shutter and it seems to be firing properly. And so I don't know, this isn't the lens that come with it. And in fact, I think this one didn't have a lens at all, but it's a 28 uh, to 90 lens. It come with the one of the other ones I was given, one of the other cameras I was given, which I'm going to get rid of as well. And this is a thousand FN. And I can't remember what the difference was between the F and the FN, but there was a, there was a, it wasn't a huge difference. It was a small difference. Um, this is probably one of the cheaper end of the uh, of the Canon EOS ranges at the time, and uh, it was the f it was one I could afford uh, when my friend had the EOS hundred, and uh, here's you press a button, pop up flash. With this one, you have to pop it up yourself. <laughs> oh, the differences! But remember, the end game was with film photography is it's only really as good as the lens you're putting on the front, unless you're doing unless it's functionality you want. It's only as good as you and that lens. So, you know, it's, it, that's why, that's why I, I only want to keep a couple. Because why would I have something, say, like a, um OM-1 instead of an OM-10 when I've got the same lens for it? To me, it doesn't make sense. 
Um, and then and so people are going to go off on one about why the OM1 is so good and so much better. I don't care. Anyway, it's, uh, so let's just have a quick look at the top. As I say, I've changed the battery over, so it's in this camera now. And these took a two, two CR5. Other, the last one I show you, I don't even know, I think it's a 500. They took a different battery to this. And um, one of the other major differences between this one and the 100 is you don't have like a push button there. It doesn't lock. This one literally just switches through the different um, settings. Another thing it does is when you load the camera, it takes the film to the end and then winds back. So basically, if, if you were to, were to open the back of the case up, it will protect a majority of your shots that you've already taken. And uh, will, it, will it take a shot? Yeah, it, it's working. It's wonderful, one frame a second. And, um, and it also had like the same as the other one, uh, portrait, landscape, close up and sports modes and stuff like that. Um, there was one, ah, uh, there it is, and this one had this depth mode, and basically the idea was, if you were trying to get the best at your depth of field, you'd focus, I think it was you focused on one piece, focus on the foreground, focus on the background, then refocus, I, I'm guessing it's the foreground, or in the middle, I guess, and then take your shot, and it's meant to give you the best aperture for that particular shot, it never, I, I never got it to work properly anyway. So, on to the last one of the three of this video, because there's obviously a lot more stuff I've got to talk through over the next coming weeks. So, I forgot to mention the lens on this is 28 to 80, and it's a, what is it? Oh, I have to look at the front now. Oh, I thought I was done with this camera. Uh, 3.5 to 5.6 um, aperture, 28 to 80, standard Canon EF zoom lens. Yep. Nothing spectacular, nothing uh, out of the ordinary, but there's that one. Okay, on to the, I think it's the 500. I hope I've got it right. Yeah, so I got it completely wrong. It's an EOS 300, and this one was given to me, I believe, by my dad. I don't know where it came from. I didn't buy it. I think mine was given to me by, by my dad. He bought it in a charity shop and thought I might make use of it, which I did because it's a nice, it's a nice little camera. I wonder what that is there. Oh, is that a light? A little light, I think, for focusing. Um, again, has a poppy uppy flash, and nothing too dissimilar from either the other two. It still has the uh, um, has the program uh, shutter priority, aperture priority, manual depth, and ISO, and again, also the different uh, uh, special modes like the uh, portrait, landscape, close up. Sports and what's that last one there? I don't know. Ah, that one it has a night mode. Okay, so that's that one there. Now, this lens is a little bit more chunky. Okay, and uh, what it is, it's a Casina 19 to 35 mil lens. Um, and I used to have one of these, I have one now, but I used to have one of these back in the day, and um, I had it because I couldn't afford the Canon's one it was just it, this was so much cheaper uh, whether it was as good i don't know but i've taken some really grand shots with this in more recent times as well and it was because the big thing in practical photography in the day was like oh you've got to get your super wide angle lens and get these shots and then do infrared and that sort of stuff there was the, it was the in thing to do mind you you couldn't do infrared on these cameras because of the actual transport of the film but that's another story so yeah, it's basically a 19-35mm uh, um, to 35 mil lens, and when you stop it down a bit, it does become quite sharp. Um, I can't remember what it is now, is it? Um, let's open it up and I'll tell you what it is. So, it's 9-35, 3.5-4.5 lens. So that's quite nice. It looks lovely and clean. It looks really, really in good condition, actually. Um, mine was the silver one as well, if I remember rightly, when I bought it. And the only way I could afford it was, we, when I used to work for Sainsbury's back in the day, I, um, we used to get like um, a payout, um, like a bonus payout, and I used that money to buy, to buy it. And that was before, was it, I think it was before I'd had the 50E. Anyway, so those are my three Canon EOS cameras, and um, I really need to get a shot of these. If anyone's interested in taking off my hands, let me know that you can be, you should be on my about page, you better find an email address for me. 
and um, send me an email if you want to take all three of them off my hands. There's a load of other cameras as well. I just really, really, I'm really done with them. And as I say, I just want to keep one or two of the cameras because obviously I'm moving in the next few weeks. Anyway, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And um, oh, there's a buy me coffee link in the description below. And I'll see you very soon.